Canada, our home and native land. The true north, strong and free indeed. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons to move to Canada. With glowing hearts we see the rise, the true north, strong and free. For this list, we're looking at reasons why you might want to move to the country north of the USA. To some outsiders, Canada might seem like a magical place where beavers outnumber people, it rains maple syrup, and the streets are paved with craft dinner. We are attempting to attract the giant now with a bowl of craft dinner. And while Canadians do get a chuckle out of these hilariously exaggerated stereotypes, there is so much more to the country than its semi-aquatic rodents and poutine. So raise your double doubles and toast the reasons that make living in the Great White North so great. Well, I am as serious as a poutine shortage in Shakutami during a curling bond spiel. <laughs> I don't know what any of those words mean. Number 10, multiculturalism. Suffice it to say that we adopted a policy of multiculturalism as opposed to the melting pot of your American model. Visit any major city in Canada, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and you'll feel like you're taking a tour of more than just one country. Neighborhoods like Chinatown and Little Italy, and even a Koreatown in Toronto, can be found in those major cities and provide an immersive cultural experience for tourists and natives alike. But every nationality and background imaginable is spread out throughout the cities too. Nothing's absolute, but when it comes down to it, most Canadians aren't afraid of diversity. In Canada, people don't care where you're from. As long as you're friendly and, and maybe loan them a smoke or hand over a donut. In fact, in 2015 and 2016, Canada, under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, welcomed 25,000 Syrian refugees into the country. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Speaking of the PM, Trudeau's cabinet proved to be the most diverse ever seen in Canadian politics, having an equal number of men and women some minorities, and even former refugees. Why was that so important to you? Because it's 2015. Number nine, abundant natural resources. Did you know that without its freshwater lakes, Canada would actually be smaller than the United States? Or that Canada holds 7% of the world's renewable water supply, the third highest next to Brazil and Russia? That's because the country is known for its beautiful scenery, with too many lakes, streams, rivers, and wetlands to count. Not to mention the fact that the Northern Territories are mostly snow and ice. In addition, Canada has no shortage of gold, nickel, diamonds, lead, and crude oil, which means other countries look to Canada for exports of natural resources, thus helping Canada's economy to thrive. Number eight, it's not yet overpopulated. Non-Canadian citizens asked to name places in Canada will come up with well-known cities like Toronto and Montreal, but often know next to nothing about the rest of the country. What might make this difficult is that out of the 36 million or so people residing in the country, only about 2.5 million make up the population of Nunavut, the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. To put that in perspective, there are 13 million people living just in the province of Ontario. The cities may be crowded, but when you think of Canada as a whole, there is still plenty of unused space, especially in the lesser populated areas further north. Nunavut is authentic Arctic. It's got a culture that is still thriving. Number seven, hockey. As long as there's ice to skate on, we're at home. Here's one stereotype that isn't so exaggerated after all. Canadians love their hockey. You got your can of do's, and you got your can of don'ts. Top shelf right there, number one. Don't go telling a Canadian you don't follow hockey. <laughs> Contrary to the stereotype, not everyone actually plays the sport. But when there's a game on TV, you know what many Canadians will be doing. From the Vancouver Canucks to the Montreal Canadiens, some follow the NHL almost religiously. Can we watch hockey? Uh, well, the game's over, sweetheart. Canadians won, by the way, so you owe me 10 bucks. Canada may be known as a nice and quiet country, but nothing can prepare you to see them after a hockey game is aired. When a Canadian team loses, riots. When a Canadian team wins, more riots. Needless to say, Canadians take their hockey very seriously. Quand accepte de jouer, mes boys, faut que t'ailles le puck, t'as tué sur le gueule. Puis dans mon livre à moi, les boys qui sont cités l'ont tout. Number six, Canada's reputation. I don't live in an igloo or eat blubber or own a dog sled. And I don't know Jimmy, Sally, or Susie from Canada, although I'm certain they're 
really, really nice. Movies and TV shows have a habit of misrepresenting, or at least grossly exaggerating Canadian stereotypes. You bumped into him, and he apologized and gave you a donut on the hose? Oh, it's just like home. And while it's unlikely that you'll see Canadians actually slather maple syrup on everything, where do you pour the syrup? Or end every sentence with A, they're hardly gonna hold a grudge over these stereotypes. Cause, you know, that's their deal. I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? In fact, Canadians typically find rumors that they live in igloos or ride polar bears very amusing, since most have never seen a wild polar bear in their life, and probably never will. Freaking polar bears! Polar bears? You didn't hear about the polar bear? Number five, low violence and crime rates. I love to leave my door unlocked when I leave the house, but this ain't Canada. No one's naive enough to believe that Canada, however friendly, is without violence and crime. There are all too often incidents of theft, homicide, and abductions across the country. But Canada looks like Disneyland compared to crime rates in other countries. You guys are the world's leader in handgun violence, your healthcare system is bankrupt, and your country is deeply divided on almost every important issue. Your cops are called Mounties. <laughs> For instance, in 2010, there were 554 cases of murder in Canada, compared to a whopping 12,000 or so in the US, around 25,000 in Mexico, and at the top of the list, Brazil, with approximately 40,000. Canada may not be perfect when it comes to violent crime, but what country is? There may be some bad eggs living among them, but for the most part, Canada has no room for hate in its heart. I forgot you guys don't have that in Canada. Number four, balanced politics. We here in Canada know that America is currently experiencing political discourse, and because of Canada's clean air, friendly nature, good food, and super hot non-bananas prime minister, many Americans have expressed interest in moving here. Americans often threaten to move to Canada when politics at home aren't going their way, because they think Canadians have it better than they do. They don't know the half of it. For starters, living in Canada could add years to your life, since the life expectancy is among the highest in the world, landing somewhere in the top 10 to 15 at approximately 81 years old, depending on the source. And their Rocky Mountain, fresh Atlantic, warm Pacific, and cool Arctic airs might be contributing factors. Need to take time off after having a baby? No problem. In Canada, you can take almost a year off. Though if there are two parents involved, this time would have to be shared, though you'd still be paid over 50% of your salary. Also, Canada is a secular country, giving citizens the freedom to follow their own beliefs and lifestyle choices. Case in point, gay marriage has been legal since 2005, a full decade before the United States. Now, same-sex partners can marry legally. Love comes in many forms, a victory against hatred and discrimination. Number three, education. Because no other place offers such a world of possibilities. As of 2014, Canada was the seventh most popular destination for international students. Why? Because young people from all over the world travel to Canada specifically to study there. Diversity is more than just diversity in culture and color. It's more about diversity and in interest in Canada. You can literally be anyone in Canada. McGill University, located in the city of Montreal, is not only one of the top universities in the country, it's also typically ranked within the top 30 universities in the world. Sweetie, you could still go to McGill, the Harvard of Canada. Otherwise, institutions like the University of Toronto and of British Columbia are also praised for their excellence. International students mostly spend just as much on tuition as where they came from. But for Canadian citizens, tuition costs are insanely low. Number two, it's peaceful. When okay. I was from Canada, said it was probably his fault for getting robbed and apologized for wasting my time. <laughs> oh, Canada. Canadians are pretty laid back on the whole, so they'd much rather do their own thing than pick fights with other countries. What's there to fight about anyhow? Canadians are generally a happy lot, and you'd be hard pressed to find a country with a major beef against the nation. Hey, I thought you didn't like Canada. Are you kidding? I love Canada. Don't get us wrong, the Canadian military is certainly considered world class, but Canadians grow up in a country where people of different colors, Cultures, religions, and sexualities make up much of the population. More people living in Canada will have family and other close connections in other countries, leading to more international exchanges and relationships. If they have to fight, they will. But peace, kindness, and acceptance are for the most part ingrained in them from birth. 
and Canada tends to focus their energy more on peacekeeping missions than all-out war. You know, just, you know, when you go over there, just be nice. They're Canadians. You're referring to the broad generalization that Canadians are polite? Yes, I am. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Uh-oh, ketchup chips, what's wrong? What, I like ketchup chips. Your milk comes in bags. We use kilometers, we use liters, we use grams, but the height thing never made the transition to the metric system from the old, whatever it's called, system. Number one, free health care. Doesn't matter, they have free health care. <laughs> ah, okay, so the term is rather misleading, since health care in Canada isn't free per se. And this moose receiving a colonoscopy under Canada's fantastic single-payer health care system. What it means is that since Canadians all pitch in towards health care through taxes, the cost of health care becomes significantly cheaper. It's times like this, you got to be glad to be a Canuck. The specifics of coverage vary between provinces, but as a rule of thumb, they get free clinics, which, sure, inevitably lead to long wait times. But at least those wait times show that people are taking advantage of the system. In some other countries, waiting rooms are empty because medical attention is too expensive. There's also limited coverage for vision and dental care. If we give up our dental plan, I'll have to pay for Lisa's braces. But what it really boils down to is that in Canada, the country's health is in the hands of its citizens, who are therefore able to get the care they deserve for next to nothing. Man, those Canadian doctors bandaged me up, reset my jaw, put my shoulder back in its socket, and they didn't even bill me, idiots. Do you agree with our list? Hey, I don't suppose you'd want to move to Canada. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Canada? For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Canadians also helped win two world wars and gave the world Neil Young, William Shatner, Leonard Cohen, Pamela Anderson, one quarter of Barney Stinson, instant mashed potatoes, and best of all, you.